Home Builder is driving up prices. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my morning shine of coffee, and I thought we'd start this weekend with an article that was just sent to me by a viewer this morning. It's from Domain, and it's discussing something I do not think anyone will be surprised about. Well, anyone except all the people who think the government handing out money doesn't create a, you know, an increase. You know, maybe like this theory, this theory that I've been putting forward to people that's, you know, just older than most economic theory, the Catalong effect, and it refers to the relative prices or change in prices resulting from a change in money supply. The change in relative prices occurs because the change in money supply has a specific injection point and therefore a specific flow path through the economy. So the federal government offering every Tom, Dick and Harry 25 grand to build or buy houses. Hmm, what could that injection point be? And then coupled with support at the state level, get up to 45 grand in WA for housing. For housing. And we're in the midst of a housing bubble. We're in the midst of a housing bubble. Property prices have gone, well, incredibly high. And I would say it's, well, part of a strained culture now. Owning homes. It's the expectation, isn't it? Everyone wants to get in a home. Where in Europe, it's socially more acceptable to just rent, rent for your whole life. There's more protections in place. Yeah. But here in Australia, everyone wants to get a home. And I don't blame them. You want the security, you want the stability. You want to avoid the risk of the state stepping in and locking you into your subsidized housing. But that's another topic. So let's have a look at this. The Home Builder Grants, Buyers Hopes Dashed by rising prices so it looks like the we spoke about you know initial kick new home purchases shot up the last data from hia looks like that's hit that's the peak that's the peak they're the people who were just on the edge who could jump in or who have jumped in expecting home builder you know before prices have inflated so the markets move the markets adjust it adjusts every time you intervene in the market one way or another you will influence it. You're picking winners. If you flood one sector with money, it gets more expensive. So from elated to furious, 36-year-old Sarah Billington has been on a roller coaster ride trying to buy a house and land package, and the Home Builder Grant hasn't helped. It's heartbreaking, says the business support officer and author of the $25,000 federal grant to new home buyers announced a month ago in a bid to boost the construction sector and the broader economy amid the pandemic-induced recession. Ms. Billington's hopes of taking advantage of the fund were dashed when her builder informed her that developers had raised their prices by a similar amount in response. Yep, that's that's it. But he, he, I mean, here's the question. Is this a new thing? People, ex well, people buying homes in the middle of their life as single. You know, it, it's shifted, isn't it? It's moved so far late that it's not the old model of where a couple gets together, you start a family, you buy, or you buy a house and you start a family, hopefully that way. Or you start a family and you go, oh, okay, we need a house. <laughs> this, this tiny cramped apartment's too small. But it's more people trying to do it by themselves later in life. Well, that's just going to be harder. We're in, a, we're in a world now where you, you generally need two people working to get a house. You know, that's worked out really well, hasn't it? You know, wonder why our quality of life is going down in general. So industry experts say such price hikes are not illegal. Wow. But are a common outcome of this type of economic policy. Yes, that's it. It's called, come on, come on, let's, let's teach some people about economics, about the market. You know, about how intervening in the market isn't a good thing. It doesn't always work. It sounds good. See, this is the problem. It can sound good in the soundbite. It can emotionally, you know, win your votes. It can emotionally win your votes. But then you come out and give people a dose of reality. They don't like that at all. They don't like that at all. You know, and it won't win your votes. So you won't get in. So you, you're, you know, you're incentivized. Politicians are incentivized to just chase the fields. 
trace the fields. We're, we're in a well, post-fact world, aren't we? I wonder if we've always been. I think just social media exacerbates it. So she's bought land. After buying land in Rock Bank in Melbourne's West in January, Miss Bellington landed a permanent job in the city's southeast, prompting her to look again at this preferred but slightly more expensive region. But she already bought land, I don't, don't understand. When the pandemic first hit, she saw prices for three bedroom home and land packages drop by 60 grand to 90 grand. She looked into cancelling her Rock Bank contract, contract but found she might not uh, sorry, she might lose not only her deposit but an additional 10% of the land value, about 22 grand. Then the government offered her 25,000. I was elated, she said. Even if I had to lose my land, I could still afford to buy nearer to work, family and friends. Okay, so Okay, so this poor girl has has rushed bought land somewhere else and and then got a job somewhere else and oh. This sounds like FOMO trying to get in the market. Like a land bank. And I understand why. I understand why. But sometimes patience is a better virtue. You don't know what's coming up. I mean, you can't live on land. You can't even put a tent on a land. The council will, will nab you if you put a caravan on it. If you put a tent on it. I know we've got one viewer. He's living in a shed and you know, uh, building up his house bit by bit. Which is no sensible idea. I like the idea of building just a small house and extending it. Not a tiny house, a small house and extending it. Within days of contacting builders, she was again disappointed. Well, yeah, the builders are going to get busy. They're going to get busy. And when you get busy, well, your time gets more valuable. You think, you know what? I'll just price myself out of this, this fee. I want, you know, I want to put the, the quote in, but I'll, I'll charge a little bit extra just because we're so busy or I need to take on extra people or I'm tired. I mean, that, that's, that's how it is, guys. That's how it is. If you're busy, you can say no. And she might be a painful client. You might go, oh, yeah, nah, nah that high maintenance type there. We'll, we'll charge you with extra. And don't, don't you dare tell me you don't do that if you're not in the trade or construction. You, you know the type of client. I mean, it's unfair. She may be, she may be nice. But, yeah, you know. There's a reason why Rachel and I divide the work. We divide the work. She gets all the kitchens and color picking and those type of things. Uh, particularly for the residential clients. A representative of builder Franken Homes informed Miss Bellington by email that they had 250 inquiries within 48 hours of Home Builder being announced. 250 inquiries. Now let me bring up this quote, everyone, again, and I think you need to you need to share it with people who don't understand the implications of this. I mean, it's a given now. Our financial literacy here in Australia is, is shockingly low. Uh, economic education is non-existent. You know. So that's why you'll have masses of voters just lining up for government handouts, government interventions, not realizing that it's going to screw them over in the end. We're, we're all going to suffer in the end because of the government interventions. We're going to be worse off. That's the problem. It may sound good. It may feel good, but it's going to cop us and it, we're going to hit it in the end. Houses are going to get even more expensive. The natural adjustment to the market that should have resulted, which was happening, which was happening up here, you know, a 60 to 90 grand drop. The market was adjusting. Heat was falling out. And the government has just thrown more money at it. More money at it. So there's going to there's gonna be, you know, people at different levels who are just on the edge of getting in or have been saving up and this will be the plunge. It's like, like us. Seriously, I, I, Rachel's pretty pretty angry at me <laughs> yeah, because she'd finally seen oh we can we can do this renovation because it's been years years to build the house under and that and i'm just gonna I'd, I'd, it'll take it would take us right to the edge right to the edge and i don't want to do that particularly with an overheating market particularly with the um, lack of liability for trading while insolvent for directors just has me a little worried i'll, I'll be patient and wait a little bit Wait a little bit. And that that's why you'll he often hear me say in videos, oh how I I just painted a wall. You know, so that that's the thing. I've got to keep I've got to keep the little home improvements just moving to keep the wife happy. I've got to get the bathroom done. <laughs> so we've done the external wall with um 
what is it, WeatherTex. Looks great. Put the window in. Looks fantastic. Now I've got to um, paint the rest of that outside wall. So encapsulate all the lead paint. Go over it nice. And then start redoing the bathroom. So I've got to move a bathtub and reline some walls. Actually put some waterproofing in there, which didn't exist. You know, that's the problem when you get these 100-year-old houses. A lot of these, these luxuries, like builder's film, <laughs> weren't, weren't around or weren't put in. It makes a big difference. Anyway, anyway, home builder, real home builder life. So back to this, back to this. Well, that's why I'm being patient, everyone. The cheaper lots had already been sold. The builder continued adding that in response to home builders, developers had put their prices up by $30,000, which meant builders like Franken had little choice but to pass on the increased costs. Another builder has since told her the same thing. So we've got two stories of anecdotal evidence driving this, which I think is pretty accurate, honestly. But here's the, here's the real the real sign that she doesn't know what's happening. I was infuriated, said Billington. Surely this can't be legal. Surely this can't be legal. There's the problem. That's the instant, the reflex, the reflex response. Surely this can't be legal. This is what happens when people have no understanding of how the market works. When they expect the state to take care of them. And you can't blame them. You can't blame them. The government's locked them all down. Melbourne, I mean, come on. There you go. Yeah, of course it can. Costs are going up. They're busier. Yeah, there's free money on the table. More suckers are going to be jumping in. Interest in the, in the scheme has been high, with Commonwealth Bank reporting a record number of appointments made with lenders in the weeks after announcement. Developers and builders increased their prices in response to government grants. may not be illegal, but it's not uncommon. The housing and property market is a market, said Urban Task Force Chief Executive Tom Forrest. Yes, yes. And when you intervene in the market, when you flood three, free money into a market, you're going to have an outcome. People really don't understand, do they? They really don't understand. At least I'm hoping. I'm hoping that... Maybe I'm naively hoping that out of all of this, some people will get you know, a bit more... A bit more consideration. Maybe we just need to force everyone to do some education in Austrian economics as a requirement for entering politics. If demand is such that it can withstand a lift in the price... That is what will happen. This is the risk with a demand-led stimulus. Yes, yeah, there we go. Uh, the Grattan Institute's Brendan Coates is more critical, calling grants that boost the building industry without helping home buyers pretty lousy economics. That's, oh, yeah, well. These grants tend to get pushed through to land values. The think tank's house, household finances program director said, Home builder means a builder can choose between building more houses or making more profit per house. Giveaways to home buyers are widely popular, he added, but they're not going to improve housing affordability long term. Property Council of Australia Chief Executive Ken Morrison disputes this. We haven't seen any evidence of price increases, he said. Our members are telling us that the market remains very competitive and price sensitive. All of the indicators are that Home Builder is doing what it is intended, stimulating the residential construction sector and supporting hundreds of thousands of jobs. He notes Home Builder guidelines require contracts to be commercially reasonable and not inflated. Now, here's the thing. We've only, this, this article is based on two examples that this young lady's put forward. Well, this lady my age has put forward. Now, could it just be that the builders she spoke to are so busy, they don't feel like dealing with her as a client, so they've just told her a whopper. Could that be the story that's here? The real story. What do you reckon, guys? Let, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Developers must be able to show the contract price for the new build is no more than a comparable product in quality, location, and size. As of July 1, 2019, Minister for Housing and Assistant Treasurer Michael Sucker confirmed a comparable a comparable home in Melbourne's southeast has increased by 66,000 between March and June 2020 
searches of internet archives reveal. What they could have done, they could have allowed people to claim their interest costs on their houses as a tax deduction. That would have increased their capacity to make repayments on the loans, would have made it more accessible for them, then it wouldn't have had the same impact on this. It wouldn't have been people going, oh, wow, 25 grand. Even let them do it for 10 years. Who cares? You want to stimulate the market? Do it like that. It'll be slower. It wouldn't be as popular. It'd be a little bit, a little bit more complicated. But would it have the same impact? Probably. Probably would have had the exact same impact. <laughs> Correcting for grants available at the time, a three-bedroom, two-bathroom, two-car house and land package in Clyde North was priced on the Frank Franken Homes website at 401000 July figures were not available. And 468 in the weeks following Home Builders' announcement. Franken Homes did not respond to several opportunities to confirm these figures or comment for the, this story. Yeah, but uh, things get more expensive, everyone. Building materials get more expensive, you know. Inflation, which isn't really, houses aren't really counted in that, funnily enough. Mr. Sucker did not answer the question of who Miss Billington could complain to about the disparity. The Victorian government also did not respond to this question. Oh, wow, they want so much market intervention. Bloody hell. Quiet plebs, just take your money, you know, buy your crappy, shitty, you know, spec homes, sit in debt for 40 years, and then just, you know, Go to aged care home and die. Just do that. Stop complaining. How dare you? Bloody... This This is what happens, guys. This is the mess you get into when the government steps into the market. Every time. Uh, Grattan's Mr. Coates suspects much home builder money will go to people who would have gone ahead with purchases anyway and would prefer to see the cash channeled to first home buyers or social housing. Again, this call for social housing. I suspect the checks and balances are there mainly to stop outright collusion or fraud. He said, yes, he's right there. See, this is the thing. Okay, she, she priced out of the market, but she's done a stupid mistake. She's bought land where she doesn't want to live. So we're not talking to the best example here. Miss uh, Billington, the experience has further hit her confidence in the industry. The Home Builder Grant sounded like a lifesaver, not just for the soon-to-be struggling construction industry, but for first home buyers like me. But competition and land office offices have driven prices up and made it harder than ever, she said. I still hope to build somewhere that won't include a two-hour commute, but at the moment it's not looking good. Then why the hell did she buy land so far away from where she was going to get a job? Can someone explain that to me? Can someone explain that? Am, am I doing my victim-blaming thing here again? You know? But seriously, I was looking for a house, okay? <laughs> I was looking here in Brisbane. I was looking all around the suburbs and areas, looking, looking, looking. We were looking at, you know, we were even looking at the Gold Coast. That was an hour commute. We we're looking at Logan, Waterford West. That was a half hour, 45, even an hour commute, probably with the tradey morning traffic. I just waited and we kept looking. This is the problem. The instant reaction is it's illegal. Government, help me. What do you think, everyone? What do you think? Is this just the harsh lesson, lesson in economics that a lot of people need? Do you think people will learn? Do you think they'll learn? Or they even understand what's going on? I mean, it is Victoria. You know. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Are you jumping on the home builder? Have you seen prices go up? Or do you think it's just a client that may be a little bit too much trouble? I mean... She did jump straight in, getting an interview done about it. Would that be what a lot of people do? You know, you'd hate you'd hate for something to go wrong. On a, you know, a normal defect with a client like that, running to a current affair. Yeah, I, I can see that happen. Yep, I, th I think some warning bells may have been may have been flashed in people's uh, risk assessment process in potential clients. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and want to support the content I create, there are a few ways you can. Simply interacting with the channel. Let's the algorithm know you're enjoying the content. You can support us by joining us on YouTube or Patreon, using any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin, buying our merch from Heiser Says, using Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or supporting us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.